also Israeli doesn't casualties. know how to handle. Let's turn to Israeli casualties. Pardon? Let's turn to Israeli casualties now. Because Please. from 2001 to the 28th of July, there were 35 casualties. But in the last three weeks, there have been 51 casualties. 13 years, 35 casualties. Three weeks, 51 casualties. How does that make any sense to Israel? You're talking about the fact that we've had so few casualties? No, I'm talking about the fact that others? you've had more casualties in the last three weeks than you've had in 13 years. Well, one of the reasons is when you send in combat troops in door-to-door -door fighting, which is done to minimize casualties on the other side, among other reasons, you're going to face uh, a very difficult time, and you will lose soldiers. And this also happened to us in Janine back in 2002. It's the same experience. You know, you can always, in these kinds of wars, try and use overwhelming air power, you know, like the Allies did in World War II, or like the Russians did in the First Chechen War. We don't follow that policy. We're not going to napalm whole areas. We're going to ask the people to leave. We'll supply them with maps of how to get out of the way. We'll communicate them with text messages in Arabic. And we are doing our best to protect our population as well as the Palestinian population. But we're at war not with a democracy. We're at war with a terrorist organization well, designated as today. such by the European Union. Let's come back. The Israeli military calls itself the Israeli Defense Force. Can its current military operation and the tactics that it's using in this conflict be described as defensive? Well, I think the strategic objective of the Israeli government has been from the beginning of the confrontation, of the, of the current confrontation, has been to restore deterrence. I mean, Israel is interested in the status quo. I'm not going at the moment into the political context on which previous people have, uh, have discussed. I'm talking about the more limited strategic objective. And the strategic objective of Israel, of the Israeli government, has been to restore a kind of a deterrence balance between Israel and Hamas. There are no further objectives beyond that. There are also tactical objectives, and that is to eliminate the tunnels, to hit as much as possible the rockets, that uh, the arsenal of rockets that the Hamas has, but there is no objective of trying to destroy Hamas altogether. And I agree with the previous speaker that, in fact, going into, Ham into Gaza and taking over uh, the Gaza Strip by the Israeli forces, something which Israel IDF, the Israeli army, could do within a few hours in terms of sheer military capabilities, would be, in fact, uh, not cost-effective. In, in fact, the uh, political, strategic, and, not strategic, but political, and in terms of casualties, it would be uh, counterproductive. Uh, you, so you, the, okay. the Israeli main objective is rather limited. Okay, Yusuf. Back to today, uh, eight children and two adults at the latest count killed at a beach club in Gaza. If it turns out, they were killed by the Israeli military. You have failed yet again to spare civilians. You're in a, involved in a high-tempo combat zone. We will investigate all these situations. We have a judge advocate general in the Israeli army. Many other armies, investigations are handled by the division commander. That's not true in the Israeli army so that the division can't, commander will often protect his soldiers. The judge advocate general wants to get to the bottom but of this. this. Is repeated, and if he doesn't this do is his repeated, job... In, this is a re, it's all very well to investigate after the fact. But repeatedly, you have, inadvertently or whatever, killed civilians, including 228 children. You must regret that. Of course, this we have deep regret. And Israelis feel terrible sadness when they hear the news of any loss of a civilian on the Palestinian side. But you know something? We also feel rage. And the rage is directed against Hamas, who puts civilians in that position. It is Hamas that wants to sacrifice its people for political purposes. But you do accept which is that why perhaps there were spokesmen. You do accept that perhaps it was Israeli firepower, Israeli missiles that killed those children today. That is possible. By the very fact you're having an investigation, you must admit that it's possible. 
you always have to check yourself. And I hope the British Army and the American Army and the German Army do the same thing. You've had these issues in Afghanistan and in Iraq, which you have also investigated. Dorgal, thank you very much for joining us.